the other study about dana or generosity if you ask what is meant by dana it may be defined as generosity liberality like offering of food offering of clothing personal amenities etc to needy persons to persons who are worthy of honor like our parents elders relatives or bhikkhus etc but as in any other good or bad action so also in offering gifts it is a noble intention and the volition that really counts as the action not the mere outward deed and pali we go chetana that meritorious deeds are the most dependable refuge for the welfare of their lives throughout the samsara as you know the samsara the cycle of existence so it is customary for them to do meritorious deeds such as dana or generosity seva or moral deed bhavana or meditation to their utmost Now you may want to know the results and benefits of the meritorious deeds like dana or generosity. Now let us try and understand the Lord Buddha's admonishment on the six kinds of dana or generosity and their results and benefits. as described in samyukta nikaya of pali text once upon a time while our lord buddha was residing at the savati jetavana monastery one deva deva is a celestial being he approached our lord buddha at midnight he most humbly paid obeisance and inquired one he said what to offer so that it be amount to offering of vitality and strength two what to offer so that it be amount to offering of pleasant appearances deva said what to offer so that it be amount to offering of happiness and comfort four what to offer so that it may amount to offering of the eyes meaning visual capacity and five what to offer so that it may amount to offering of all the four gifts the lord buddha our enlightened one replied thus o deva one offering of food amounts to offering of vitality and strength to offering of clothing and robes amounts to offering of pleasant appearances and three offering of vehicles and conveyance amounts to offering of happiness and comfort the number four offering of light as of candles lamps electrical energy etc it amounts to offering of eyes that is visual capacity the number 5 offering of dwellings lodgings rest houses and monastic buildings amounts to offering of all the four gifts offering of dharma by preaching admonishing or distributing and propagating scriptures doctrinal books etc amounts to offering of nibbana bliss deliverance from all sufferings these are the six kinds of dana or generosity and the six corresponding results and benefits explained the lord buddha now let us try and understand one by one in more detail the first one food dana or food generosity Even if a person is healthy and energetic when one is deprived of his daily normal food intake 
one gradually becomes weak and lethargic. But when one's nutrition is replenished, one becomes hale and hearty again. So, food dana amounts to offering of vitality and strength. Though a person may have good looks, if one's clothing or dresses are dirty, worn out and ragged, one's appearance will not be very presentable. But when one is adorned with neat and tidy dress, one's appearance has become pleasant and amiable. So offering of clothing or robes, etc. amounts to offering of pleasant appearances. The number three, offering of vehicles and conveyances, etc. Offering of vehicles, conveyances and various means of traveling and communication like motor cars, railways, boats, steamers, aeroplanes, slippers, shoes, umbrellas, etc. and contribution or maintenance of roads, bridges, etc. all best out the travelers to reach their destinations with comfort, ease and security. Thus, offering of vehicles and conveyances amounts to offering of comfort and happiness. The number four, offering of light. Though a person's eyesight may be good, if there is no light, it will not be possible for one to move about properly in one's daily routine. That is how offering of light amounts to offering of the eyes. Then offering of dwellings, etc. A person, after a day's strenuous work and life's labor, comes back under the shelter of one's dwelling and rest, will revitalize him. He will recuperate with renewed vigor physically as well as mentally. That is how offering of dwellings amount to offering of all four gifts. The Nanda must say that our Lord Buddha added was offering of Dharma. Teachings, preachings, admonishments, exhortations of scriptures, canonical texts or religious or ethical and moral literatures, etc. will accrue to those who study, learn and practice and striving deliverance from all these samsaric suffering. Hence, the offering of Dhamma amounts to offering of the eternal bliss of Nibbana. In conclusion, I wish me all be able to practice the above explained generosity and attain the corresponding noble blessings and finally realize the eternal bliss of Nibbana. Now, if you all have questions, you may ask. The question is, if one can differentiate between big dana or small dana, differentiation of dana, big or small, is on the material side. In our Buddhist philosophy or our Buddha's teaching, we always have two-sided vision or two perspectives when we consider about things in life. Spiritual value and material value. That's how the, in the world there are two perspectives exist. Materialistic perspective and spiritual perspective. So in considering the amount of generosity or dana, like big or small, we have to consider from two perspectives. So when we consider about the size of dana, in simple term, we may, you may call it as quantity and quality. Big or small represents the quantity, amount of giving up rich or abundant supply of materials or gifts, that is, large quantity or big amount, or those who have, or the 
training on one's a capacity one may just have can help one may be able to present or give of a gift just a small amount. So on the material side the object can be big or small and that and that is how we can differentiate. So this quantity of material amount is from material perspective. But as I just now explained, and I put this thought, we emphasize more on the spiritual perspective. From the spiritual perspective, it is the most important factor in any deed or action. Because our philosophy is based solely on karma, action and the result, cause and effect, or condition relations. So on the spiritual perspective, the intention, which we call jirana in Bali, or in English, volition, intention or volition, that is important in deciding about the size or the result in the like of the dana or generosity. So we must emphasize on that because Karma means volition or intention to give generosity. So in spiritual perspective, the amount of the gift offer doesn't matter much, but the jirana or the intention or the volition is that is more important according to our emphasis regarding the karmic law natural law of the karma. To understand better, commentaries explained by similes. You all know banyan tree. There is a big tree next to our, our garage. This tree is very big. But its seeds of the fruit it bears is very small. So you, the quantity of dana or generosity may be as big as the tree. But if one's intention or volition is not correct or not proper, then the result, then no doubt any action will result, but the, action, the result will be like a seed. Like a seed is just like a small peanut. The compared, compared, compared to the tree, the tree is giant size, very big, and the seed is small. So commentary give example, volition, that, that is how we emphasize on jirana, volition or intention. Though the offering amount may be as big as the tree, if one's jirana or volition is not proper, then the resultant effect can be very small. Vice versa, on otherwise, on the other hand, though the material offer may be as small as a seed, but if one's intention or volition is proper, properly given, properly given gift, can bear fruit like that tree. So just you can understand. Though we can differentiate among big and small, the more emphasis is on the spiritual perspective of intention or volition, which we call in Pali Jirana. Because Jirana Buddha said, big way, jirana karma hang vanda means, he said, jirana means karma, karma means your action, volition or action, your volition is that is the cause, outside appearance of the amount of the material offer is not so important, less of lesser important. So after understanding this much, let us study Sapurisa Dana so that we know how to offer properly to be more fruitful. Buddha has taught at one time Sapurisa Dana, Pavel Paliwa. Sapurisa means noble or great beings like Bodhisattvas, Arahans, and noble persons. How they give Dana? or how they offer gifts 
poor general, how do how they carry out the generosity? So if we understand, we have to let us study and to understand it so that we, whenever we do dana or generosity, we can do it properly. The first feature of Sabrisa dana or the generosity or offering by noble persons is one, sada. The usually developed they offer gifts with two sada, two lofty, very noble, with noble sada. Out of good way, out of good conviction, by truly understanding the action, they offer it. That is why is one of the the first feature of Sapuri Sadhana or the generosity offered by these noble or great persons is called Sadhana. Sada means confession of faith. Confession of faith is not just a blind faith. The faith that is born out of understanding with wisdom. They, they usually give that way because when they give, they always reflect in their mind. They understand the law of karma, action and result, good deeds. Good because good, bad because bad. Good deeds will bear good fruit. Bad deeds will bear bad fruit. They understand that. And when they offer to their parents or teachers, they, they always think of their good qualities, noble qualities of parents, teachers or persons. And they give that way. So the first feature of Sapuri Sadhana is Sada Dana. So whenever we do Dana or generosity, we must reflect or we must carry out with true Sada or faith or conviction. So Sada is the first feature and it is very important. It's the basic of this Sapuri Sadhana. So what we must have faith in? We must have faith in true Buddha. True Buddha, as you all know, has nine infinite virtues, but he himself has formulated for easy memorizing and understanding into nine kind of virtues that we recite every day. It is so Bhagawa Arahan Sama Sambhuto Vaja Jarana Sambhano Sugato Loka We Do. Anotaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Sada Deva Manusa Nam Puto Bhagawa. So you have confidence in Buddha, not just a blind faith. True Buddhas have infinite virtues which can be formalized or sum summarized into nine kind of virtues. With that, you have confidence in Buddha. And you must have true faith in the Dharma. Dhamma six kadayas two has infinite virtues. It is concisely formulated into six kadayas or one. Sakado bhagavata dhamma sanleti go abhi go. So also the sangha. Sangha has two infinite virtues, and Buddha himself formalized into. Nine kadayana virtues for the Sangha, beginning with Supri, Pano, Bhagavato, Savaka, Sangha. So having true faith or compassion with this understanding of virtues and attributes, that is, having faith or Sada and Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha. And another faith we need to develop is Kama, Sagada, Sama, Deity. Having correct view or having faith and action and the result of karma and vipaka. So if you have true faith and this karma, sagada, sama, deity and the karma and action, karma and vipaka or action and the result. That's why when we aspire for nibbana, we have to perfect ourselves in ten ways. And the first perfection we or parameters we have to develop is this dana or generosity. So whenever you do any kind of offering, always aspire to gain nibbana, deliverance from all suffering. The corresponding material results 
whether you want it or not, you gain due to the law of karma or your action. You have to either have bad or good consequences according to your volition or intention. But any good action, we must aspire to gain Nibbana because it's the only way to gain the true deliverance from this samsara suffering. So if you do generosity or offering of gifts with true faith means having faith in the true Buddha, true Dhamma, true Sangha and believing in karma and you aspire for Nibbana. That is what, that is how these great beings like Bodhisattvas and noble persons, they do generosity. So always do it with true faith or sadha. Then the second feature of Sapuri Sadhana or the noble way of offering gifts or generosity is Sakaja Dana. Sakaja. Sakaja means reverence, respect. So when you do generosity or when you offer something to somebody, always do it with respect and reverence respectfully and reverence. That is how the noble and great person do, do generosity. Sakajadana, the first one is Sadadana, with true faith or conviction. And the second feature of the Sadhana is Sakajadana. Sakaja means respectfully, reveringly, they give all, all they always offer gifts. Because when we have some uh, knowledge about something, we tend to become conceited and we try to criticize the recipients of these gifts and one tend to become arrogant, not though they offer, they don't offer it respectfully. Like if a beggar come to the house, they just throw the coin and get out, get out. So there is no Sakaja Dara. The Bodhisattva, the great being, they never do that. Our Lord Buddha Gorama at one time, his name was Vilama and Vilama Sota. Vilama is a Brahmana, high class, high, as you all know, in India during olden days. Even now, they still have caste system. And the higher castes are very arrogant and self-conceited. But Bodhisattva at one time as a Vilama, he's a billionaire. And when he intended to renounce the world, he invited by announcing anybody who is in need of anything to come and claim from him. And he offered it. At that time, there are no noble persons. All the recipients are drunkards, crooks, and all kinds of uh, rowdy, improper persons. But in, in his mind, he keeps on his part to be pure. Oh, these people, they, because they come and receive my offering, I can do this meritorious piece of offering. And he even thanked them. And he paid respectfully, he offered it. He took out his, it's a sign at our Asian etiquette is we take out the shoes or slippers, bow down and offer with two hands. Because he aspired to gain this Buddhahood. And that is how these noble persons do it. So, if you don't want to give, don't give. But if you give, give properly like these oh, noble beings. Give respectfully. Here is a good practice and you may see in the dining hall when they offer the knee down. Here kneeling down it's, it's, you are making yourself humble. You, you are suppressing your uh, this uh, mana or conscience. It is a great act, very noble act. So that is how they give these noble persons. That is the second feature of then the third feature of this Sapuri Sadhana or the noble way of offering gifts is Kala Dana. 
हमारी वह काला भी टाइमली टाइम पीरियोडिक और टाइम टाइमली गिवस टाइमली गिवस मीन्स वेन द नीट अराइज ट्राई टू ऑफर वट एवर वन कैन लाइफ एंड गीज और लाइफ वी हैव एक्सपीरियंस सुनामी एंड रिसेंटली एंड बामस and all over the world there are many natural disasters earthquakes forest fires and etc so when in time of need if you offer it that is what we call kala dana or even in normal time if you can choose your offering to a proper time it will become kala dana like at katina time you offer katina roofs and during this first period or rainy season first our roofs is rainy roofs so these are what we call a starving person you see or some injured person you help or you contribute some kind of service to that needy person that these are the examples so kala dana so these great beings right body sadhas and noble persons they always give at the proper time and in time of need and that type of generosity is we call kala dana the fourth feature of sapuri sadhana is anokhita dana pariva anokhita means without any attachment of you to freely without any attachment of pulling back or without any regret some do the offer because if they want some honor or praise by other people so they give half heartedly not with heart and so half heartedly and afterwards they regret that who oh, i have wasted my money and there are recorded cases and the body can and also such cases so these noble persons when they give they give freely they, they never regret it. in fact they teach twice every time they think of what of their offering that's how you increase the benefit of your dana but if you regret it in fact it is uh, destructive to you the uh, result of your dana just to understand this anokita dana the feature of anokita during buddha's time there is a billion a by the name of apotaka apotaka means he is no he has got no children he didn't get married and he don't have children but he's a billion he inherited from his parents and do a billion are with rich for riches and wealth he has got no intention or no mind to enjoy his own wealth he just use very cheap food cheap clothing cheap conveniences because at one time and his past one past existence after offering food to the pachika buddha pachika buddha is as i have often explained independently and right and buddha so the recipient is very noble and his dana pays food and he become rich but due to this lacking of this anokita dana he cannot enjoy his well and one of his lifetime when he went out to work on the way he met a pachika buddha who came for arms round and he asked the pachika buddha venerable sir have you got anything the pachika buddha said i haven't got anything then he invited pachika buddha to go to his house and have food and he went to his work and on his return he met this the same pachika buddha who has received from uh, his house this arms food and he said pandey have you had received anything yes i have received a food from your house and when he asked the pachika buddha to open the lid of the bowl and when he see the new 
nutritious and delicious food and a bowl. He regret his offer. Oh, what's the use of offering this man who will eat and sleep? If I were to feed this food to my workers, they can give a production many four. And that's how he regret after when he first and then to offer it's a good jirana, but he himself can sell his jirana by regretting the offer. And that's that is why when a Jew he become a billionaire in our Buddha's lifetime. He has got no children, no relatives, he live alone with his wealth and riches, not enjoying his wealth. He lived like a, a poor beggar, not willing or not having uh, the intention to eat or to sleep because of his, his regret. That is, that is what is meant, Anokhi Dhatana. So when you do generosity or dana, the noble persons or these great beings, they do it with complete freedom or with complete detachment. Because dana or generosity is just a mere echo giving away, has very noble, busy, a very profound meaning. Because you are renouncing renunciation, you are practicing the parameters of ren renouncing your possession. Everybody cherishes one's own possession. And the fact that you can renounce is it's a noble act of uh, parameters of perfection who aspire for Nibbana. So that is how these noble person do this and that this fourth feature is Anokhi Dhatana. Then the fifth feature of Sapurisa Dhana is Anubahaja Dhana. Anubahaja Dhana. Anubahaja means not harming oneself as well as others. These great beings or noble persons, when they give generosity or dana, they don't harm themselves or harm other persons. Then what is meant by harming yourself or harming others? Some people, they give dana harming to oneself. How? They give dana to inflict their ego that they, they, can, they want to show off so that to get the other person's attraction. They give big amounts of, because they can afford, they give big amounts and they feel conceited and the ego is inflated. Uh, that is the meaning that they give dana, no doubt it's a good deed, but they inflate their ego and that is the bad deed. They're doing the mixture of good and bad deed. So that is how one gives dana or generosity by harming oneself. Then what is meant by doing or giving generosity by harming other people? Some people, they give generosity and just now, as I said, they inflate their ego and they become conceited. And not enough, they look down other people who don't give generosity. That is, other persons' life, they are their own lookout. They may have their own reason that they may not be afford to give or they may not have strong sada to give. Never mind what other people can do or cannot do. It's not, it concerns nobody. One should be careful of one's life. But instead they just look down and say, oh, these people are miserly and they are naked. They never give anything to anybody. If you can give, you give. It's a good good deed. And you spoil your good deed by looking down other people, censuring and criticizing other people, using harsh language. But these are all demeritorious. So plus and minus, if you 
to a balance. He was on the losing side. So noble person, they never uh, try to look down other people because they can give. They give freely without harming themselves or harming other people. And that is the feature of Anubhaya Jagdana. And life, our riches and wealth can be destroyed by five enemies. One is fire that we always see or heard in the news that some houses or some white trees or some wells are destroyed by fire. And the second enemy is war due to floods, due to heavy rains, destruction of the property and wealth by war, second enemy. And that is monarch and during olden days, nowadays governments, some governments, they naturalize. Using the word nationalize, they rob from citizens' properties. So the monarchs, governments, or kings, they can destroy your wealth or riches. Then the fourth is evil persons, robbers, or turquoise. This to every day many news that snatch thieves, housebreakers, and so many people can destroy your world, robbers and evil persons, thefts. And the fifth enemy is unscrupulous as like drug addicts. Now it is very rampant. Road devils, unscrupulous as children go are evil, they can destroy your riches. So these are five enemies that can destroy one's wealth or riches. So though somebody is rich, because of when we do this generosity or dana, this fifth feature of Anupahaja fighter is lacking. And though they are rich or they gain some wealth or profit, they can easily be destroyed by these five enemies. When one, while doing this generosity, if one observes this fifth feature of Anubaha Jadana, one's property cannot be destroyed by these five enemies. During Buddha's time, there, is, there was in India one millionaire, Jadila. He later become Arahant. He renounced everything and he become Arahant. Because in his past existence, he did generosity with his Anupahaja features. His property, his world, it can be destroyed by none. At that time, he lived in Rajaka. The monarch is King Bambisara. And the son, Ajata Sadhu, after killing his own father, he became the dynasty of the reign of Rajaga. And one day he went with battalion to conscript this Tatila's mansion and all the wells. But because his residence made up of with very big mirrors, the reflection in the mirror, he, he thought that when this uh, Jatila to be vulnerable uh, Arahan is resisting him with his own army and he has to run away. And when he came back, Jatila said, Just now, uh, Your Highness, you came to my house for what? He said, I came to conscript your house. Oh, in that case, you cannot do that. He, he has uh, the rings on his fingers. He asked the king to try to, to extract one ring from my finger. Ajatasat was a very strong and healthy person. He's a young prince. He pulled and pulled and the rings never came up. He said, Ajatasat said, you just hold your palm up and when he just make it like this, not, not take it now, just put it in and the, the ring fall by itself. 
to get you the hit, the person's wealth or riches, you know, be described by fools if he has got no intention of giving. This Anupar Haja Dana is so beneficial. If you do your generosity with this kind of feature, your wealth and riches cannot be destroyed by those five enemies. So coming back to the question, to, the answer is, yes, we can differentiate between the big and small amount of done our generosity and the material aspect. But as I just now explained in detail, the most, inspect, the most important emphasis is on the spiritual aspect or intentional aspect because intention is or volition is the karma that creates karma. So that is the most important difference we must make. Or in short, just simple word, not the quantity, quality is that counts. If no more question, the written question I receive is, how often should we practice meditation? Every day or every week? I have given often this answer. We don't pass a day without eating or sleeping. So we should not pass a day without meditation. Meaning, every day or every time, whenever possible and wherever possible. Because eating and sleeping is for the benefit of this life only. And that we are doing every day, not only one time, many times a day. So also we must meditate. Meditate here, meditate doesn't mean that you go and sit here, sit upright, silently or quietly in a corner. If you can keep mindful awareness of your activities, here you all are given three instructions, sitting session, walking session and daily activities. So if daily activity mindfulness can be maintained or awareness can be maintained, that is meditation. Especially this Vipassana or inside meditation means developing mindfulness. If you can be mindful of your activities throughout the day, the moment from the moment you wake up until you fall asleep, that is the greatest meditation you are achieving. So, even if you go back to worldly life from a retreat, please don't neglect or drop your mindfulness. If you can maintain mindfulness everywhere, 